Hello and welcome everybody. Happy Friday. It is a very lovely Friday indeed, because as many people have mentioned already in the chat, today is my birthday. So, celebrating with you all, because I get to talk about a topic today that is one I've wanted to talk about for a long time. But, because of the upcoming holidays, well, holidays, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I felt like now was a great time to cover this. So, Today we're going to delve into the world of computers, and we're going to talk about the worlds of Mac and PC, laptop and desktop, and go through different price points and talk about what options we may have available to us right now, but also if you're looking at this video in the future, what you can learn from this information regardless. I want today not just to be what is the best laptops or computers today. But what should you be looking for in the future as well? This information is incredibly valuable and I'm excited to bring it to you all. So I'm going to stop talking and get straight into the presentation so that we can talk about everything that is around this idea and concept. Now, this is going to be one that there's going to be a lot of questions. So please, any questions you have, throw them in the chat right now. I'm more than happy to help answer them because it's all going to contribute to the same conversation. So ask away, let's get straight into the action. So today's topic is going to be all about these two guys that you see right here. If you remember back when there was always this commercial where it'd be, hi, I'm a Mac and hi, I'm a PC. Those two companies have been battling with each other for years to say whose is better, who makes the better computer, and that's a really general concept of which is the better computer because they make, well, PCs don't even make computers. PC is not a company, it's, it's a platform. Mac is a company, is a platform, and is a brand. So there's a lot for us to unpack here that's not just these two goofy faces. So let's get straight into it with today's disclaimer. Slightly different than usual. Also, I'm going to turn the camera. Oh, wrong way. Like that. Okay, cool. Slightly different disclaimer today because it is going to be a lot of opinions. Uh, information here is meant to be as accurate and as up-to-date as possible, but is all for educational purposes. I am not paid. I am not sponsored. Sectors Made Simple is not paid. Sectors Made Simple is not sponsored by any of these companies or manufacturers or anything. This is all my personal opinions. I have owned many laptops. I've owned Macs and PCs. I've built my own computers and I have repaired my own computers. So this is something I know a lot about and I use my own knowledge to come up with many of the decisions that you'll see in this presentation. Those are my opinions. I encourage you to do your own research before making any purchase and find the best option for you. Talk with other professionals, other people that know about computers and get their thoughts as well. The more information you have, the more of an informed decision you will make. So today's topic is very straightforward. Computers in 2021. Because we're using technology more and more by the day. And computers are an important resource for us. It is how I am able to talk to you. I have a computer that is under my desk. And I have a webcam that's attached to my computer that takes my face, puts it through my computer, and then brings it to your computer. Now, some people just use their computers for reading emails, reading the news, and most importantly, watching sectors made simple webinars. But other people use their computers for work or for gaming. There's no right or wrong use for computers. And when it comes to buying a new computer, it's incredibly important to know not just the differences between Macs and PCs. Yeah, that's... 20, 30 year old story, but also the differences between laptops and desktops. And that's a lot of information, so let's get straight into the basics of what is in a computer. 
before we can talk about the differences, we need to know what does every computer need to have? These are like the organs in our body. It is our heart, it is our lungs, it is everything. And we need to know what these are. So here are the five main components, well, four for most computers and then one that's specific for laptops. But these are what go into every computer. There is the CPU. That is how fast is your computer? The way I always like to think about this is if you think about it like a grocery store. In a grocery store, uh, Josefina, I see your question. I'm going to write it down so I can come back to it later. Um, so a CPU, think of it like a grocery store. When you go to Costco, there are 10 different lanes and each one of those lanes will move faster or slower. A better CPU is gonna have more lanes and the people there, they took their fichol and their coffee today, they're going through things quickly. Or maybe there's not a lot of lanes open and the two lanes, there's the person that's trying to look through their coupon booklet and can't find the right coupon, or the cashier messed something up and needs to get the manager, it's going slowly. The CPU is the only way for you to get in and out of that store. It's the only way for your computer to do things. The faster your computer is, the more lanes there are, and the faster those lanes go, the better your computer is gonna run. The second is what's called a GPU, or a graphics processing unit. Big crazy words for just how good is your computer at making pictures and videos? For your average use, for how you probably use your computer, you don't need to worry too much about a GPU. Your CPU will have a GPU built in. If you're gaming or if you're spending over $1,200, $1,400 on a computer, you're going to want to have a separate part of your computer for graphics. It'll make it run faster, and it has a lot more capabilities than just what your CPU has. Then we have the RAM. The RAM is like saying, I can ask you right now, what's 4 times 4? And you instantly know the answer. You don't need to think about it. The answer is just right there. 4 times 4 16. Done. That is RAM. RAM is the things that you can be asked and instantly tell the answer to. It might be that book that you read yesterday, or it might be some basic math, or it might be your favorite lottery numbers. I don't know. Everyone has their own stuff that they keep in their mental RAM. But for your computer, RAM is where it puts stuff that it needs to know very quickly. And the more often it uses that information, the more likely that information is going to be in RAM. Blaze, are we going to go over different brands for each part of a computer? We're not really going to touch too much on the brands because the brands tend to just be the wrapping paper. The main processing unit of it is the important part because that's something we can compare across the desktop and laptops. But if you want to talk brands, shoot me an email, and this is something I love talking about, so I'm more than happy to go into depth, into a more in-depth conversation about this. Lucia. Uh, are you putting measurements, i.e. RAM 580? RAM 580, I am not familiar with that. Are you talking about speed? Because... RAM usually is going to be in, if you're looking at speed, it's going to be like 2600 megahertz to 3600 megahertz. Um, the RAM is, t is always going to be the same kind of size and it's not really going to be a part that you're changing out very quickly. And the measurements are standard. There's two sizes of RAM, desktop and laptop RAM, and that's really about it. So moving on, we have storage. Storage is your long-term memory. 
how much stuff can your computer know? It's not going to be right on the top of its head, but somewhere you know how to do long division. You know the different types of trucks. All that stuff is somewhere in your brain, but you need to think about it for a little bit. And then the last one is displays. That is the screen. Because for a laptop, you're buying a screen with the computer. So when the computer is, or the screen is how you look at that computer, you want it to look nice. So we're gonna look at that as well. And now, let's get into the whole debate of Mac versus PC. What is a desktop? Before we get into Mac versus PC, actually, I wanna cover this first, laptop and desktop. Because Mac has kind of moved mostly towards the laptop space. So I wanna cover this first, and then we'll go over there. A desktop computer is by far the oldest type. It is the one that we all know, love, and probably remember the sounds of. These are gonna have a single main part, the computer. It's usually a big tower. It's, it's what you think of when you think of a computer. And then attached to that computer, you're gonna have a screen, so that's the display, what you're seeing the pictures on. The keyboard, which is how you type, and I hit the wrong button and made the screen disappear. Come back to me, please. Uh... All right, let's try this again. Without hitting the close presentation button, you're gonna have a keyboard. You're gonna have a mouse. And for many types of computers, you're not gonna have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, speakers, and a webcam. You're gonna need to buy all of those things and plug them in. Now, a laptop is a portable computer. It makes things very, very easy because it's meant to be an all-in-one thing. The laptop is a computer, a monitor, a keyboard, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, webcam, all in one. And in a form that can be folded up and brought with you wherever you go. So why would we even bother with a desktop when a laptop does everything without any of the worry. We don't need a separate monitor. We don't need a separate laptop or a separate um, keyboard. A, a laptop's everything, right? Not exactly. Because while laptops are more portable and are lighter and usually are easier to set up, desktops offer a lot that laptops don't. They offer more ports. So for example, if you want to plug in a webcam or if you want to plug in things, how you plug them in, where you plug them in, and the type of plug they have is going gonna, is gonna to matter. So, for example, here's what some ports look like. So, this is a, this is a micro USB. This is a USB-C. USB 3.0. USB 2.0. Four different types of ports on a single thing. Uh, hi, what about tablets? Any suggestions about a good one? Not a fan of Apple, though. Uh, tablets are usually something I avoid. My recommendation, if you're looking at a tablet, is get a laptop that's a two-in-one. A laptop that also is a touchscreen and can work as a tablet. I find tablets are way too simple. They don't do enough, and they tend to be... Like, they're great, they're a bigger screen, but if you're looking at getting something that's portable, I would always say get a two-in-one laptop. I'll show you some in this presentation that are very budget-friendly, that gives you everything a laptop can do, but with a touch screen as a tablet as well. So, again, you'll have more of these kinds of ports when you are working on a desktop. Desktops will also be much better value for how much power you get. They'll have a lot more room for storing files. And lastly, laptops can get ridiculously hot. I have uh, had problems in the past 
where my laptop has melted the plastic on it because of how hot it got. Cautionary tale, don't buy a gaming laptop. I'll say that multiple times through this webinar, don't buy a gaming laptop. I learned that lesson so you didn't have to. <laughs> now Max. Macs are a brand of computer that are made by Apple. Macs use a operating system called iOS to work, similar to PC. So, or sorry, it's similar to Windows. So it's gonna be a little bit of a different menu and settings and all of that. But really, most Mac computers are laptops, what are called MacBooks. But Apple does make desktop versions as well, such as iMacs, which is what you see right here. That is a 2013 iMac, and it still works. Barely, but it still works. And then the Mac Pros, I'm not even going to touch that with a 10-foot pole today. You need to take out a second loan on your house in order to afford one of those. They start around $5,500, and components are about $2,000 each. So unless you have five figures to spend on a computer, and if you did, you're probably not going to need me to tell you what to buy. But the benefits of Macs are pretty clear. If you have an iPhone, if you have an iPad, if you have an Apple Watch, your messages sync, your information syncs. It's amazing. Everything flows from one device to another. They play very well with each other, and they connect perfectly. And also, Macs are typically very light. The MacBook Pros start around less than three pounds, and the heaviest one is about six pounds. For contrast, the gaming laptop I have upstairs, seven and a half pounds, battery life, two hours. Not good. Don't buy a gaming laptop. Now, PCs are literally every other computer that's not a Mac. These, or, or a Chromebook, I guess. And I did see the question about Chromebooks. I do cover them quite a bit in this webinar. They are a great budget computer, and I will show you exactly why. PCs can either be laptop or desktop. And there are dozens upon dozens upon dozens of companies that make personal computer computers, PC computers. Now, PC computers do require an operating system. They will usually come with Windows, but you can choose to run other types of operating systems as well. You can run Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, Tails, it's up to you. And then Chromebook has their own operating systems now called Chrome OS. Very similar to kind of tablet, a tablet OS. So if you're used to working on an iPad or a like Windows tablet, expect a similar user experience. Now the benefits of PCs are smaller, but still very, very important here. What about MacBooks? MacBooks are, um, are Apple computers that run iOS. And we'll talk plenty about, we'll talk plenty about MacBooks today. So the benefits of PCs are that you're not you're not beholden to Apple. You don't rely on only what Apple offers you. You have hundreds of options. And when you have hundreds of options, it's a lot easier to find good deals. And also, PCs can run every program. Macs, there are certain computers that a... Um, Macs have a certain types of files they can't run. Windows does not really have that problem. Uh, Irma is asking, do I have a gaming laptop? Lenovo, it has two little stickers that say AMD Ryzen Graphics and AMD Ryzen 7. Not really. So the, the distinction of a gaming laptop is going to be something that it's, it's going to be big. It's going to be heavy, and the battery life is typically really, really bad. Just because it says AMD Radeon graphics, that just means you have a dedicated graphics card. You're not just using the built-in graphics. That's standard on most mid to high level laptops. AMD Ryzen 7, that's a really good processor. That laptop you have right there, it's gonna be probably a 15 to $1,800, if not more, laptop. 
that's a really darn good laptop. That's not exactly a gaming laptop. To me, a gaming laptop is something that you're not looking at an AMD graphics card. You're looking at a right at a Nvidia 3080 U and these graphics cards are so big that the laptop needs to be super thick and usually has really bad uh, cooling problems. The battery life, if you get more than three hours, I would be amazed. That's what we're talking about. This thing. It was $1,000 and the graphics card in it was $600 of the price. So when $600 of your $1,000 goes into the graphics card, everything else is going to suck. And it did. This computer lasted me about two and a half years, three years before the plastic melted and I needed to go in and do a bunch of repairs. All right, let's keep, by the way, I will get passionate about this kind of topic. It's something that's very funny to me. Gaming laptops is an oxymoron. You can't have gaming and laptop. Laptops are meant to be small, portable, good battery life, Gaming computers are meant to be big, heavy, and powerful. Those two things don't mix. Not very well, at least. And if they're going to mix well, you're going to spend $2,300. And I'll show you that example later. There's only one gaming laptop that I would say is actually worth it. You can literally hear the agony of a gaming laptop trying to run a game. Yes. Yes, you can. All right, let's... Let's get a little more specific here. Um, so now we've talked a little bit about the differences between Macs and PCs and desktops versus laptops. Now let's talk about computers in the 2020 computer world. The camera's blurry. Hmm, interesting. Let me try and turn that off and on again. Hopefully that's better. All right, so where we are in 2021 is an awesome place to have this conversation. Mac and Apple, I guess, just released a new line of MacBook Pro computers. Now, I want to look at these laptops and talk about their pros and cons. And we'll also go into both desktop and laptop PCs and talk about their pros and cons. And then I'm going to share some thoughts on buying computers at different price points. Now, MacBooks. The pros here are, honestly, most of these are pretty new. Until this year, if you asked me what I thought of a MacBook, of a MacBook I would have laughed at you because I, I didn't like them. They had a bunch of features I didn't want. They lost ports. They had four ports. And all of them were cables that I don't own. So I would have needed to spend $200 to buy new cables. They're, they built the computer that they wanted you to use, not the computer that you would want to use. This new lineup of MacBook Pros is everything that I would have wanted in a computer. They are extremely good performance for very, very little heat. They, the screens are beautiful and they're extremely light. The heaviest one is going to be four and a half pounds. They work extremely well with other Apple products, iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches. And the downside here is they are expensive for what you actually get. The performance is good, but not great value. Plus, you don't really have the ability to add anything. What you get in that laptop is all you will have until that laptop goes kaput. You can't change the RAM, you can't change the storage, you can't change anything. So I hope you like it. And lastly, and honestly, the biggest issue I still have with Apple is the fact that if you need to fix something on your computer, you're sending it to Apple and Apple alone. If they need to replace one part, because of the way that they build their computers, replacing one part oftentimes means replacing the entire computer. That's not good. 
it shouldn't be if oh look you have you have a cut on your finger instead of stitching it just chop off your whole hand problem solved right no i've never really liked the fact that apples requires you to go through them to fix your problems i like googling things and trying to fix them myself maybe that's why my computer is so messed up because i tried fixing it but that's beside the point um it's kind of weird that Apple requires you to go to them to fix your problems. But if you don't want to have to worry about fixing it or finding a repair place, it's nice. Just being like, all right, ship it off to Apple, let them figure it out. And the laptops have three year warranties with the extended Apple Care. So most of the time, whatever the issue is, is usually fixed for free or included. Now, Laptop PCs. There are literally hundreds, absolutely hundreds of these options. And most of these laptops have a couple of things in common, being that you can add storage or replace storage. So if you find that whatever the laptop came with wasn't enough, you open up the back of the computer, slap in a new hard drive, and you're good to go. And repairing most laptop PCs is incredibly easy. On mine, there's literally eight screws on the back that I unscrew them, and I have access to the entire computer. Because I would have access to the entire computer, I can go to a neighborhood computer repair shop, and they would be able to fix my computer. If I didn't know what I was doing, I would take it there, and they can figure it out, because you're able to work on it. What is the best way to get rid of an old computer? I have a few that I need to get rid of, but I have con concerns about the information that is in them. That is not something that I am well enough aware of. So when it comes to deleting files, de just deleting it is not enough. There are programs online that will help you when you go to delete it, that it deletes it like five times. That would be the way to clear it. Um, I would do some research because, again, I don't know enough right now to give you an answer that I am 100% confident in. And I don't want to give you an answer I'm not confident in. All right. So... Again, with laptop PCs, the nice thing about many of them is that you can work on them or you can add components. And also, many laptop PCs offer touchscreen or tablet modes. For example, here we have Kira's laptop that has it's an actual laptop, but the screen can actually become... Am I going to have to log in? All right, I'll work on this in the meantime. So her laptop, the screen actually comes off of the entire computer and can be used as a tablet. So it's really nice for if you are drawing something or reading something, you don't need to worry about having it be whatever. All right. <laughs> Technical difficulties with the computer. That's fine, whatever. Ah, there it is. Okay, ready to detach. Detach now. You don't have to hold it. See, sometimes I need to be coached on technology. So, same laptop. Now is all just a tablet. So, there are some really cool things with, lap with PCs that allow you to turn a laptop into a tablet and vice versa. Now, the drawbacks. Paralysis by analysis. With so many options, it can get overwhelming with how many choices you really have. Also, warranties tend to be shorter than Apple's. As much as I will hate on Apple for the fact that you need to send things in to fix them, when I can't fix a problem, usually the warranties that you get through most laptop manufacturers, one year. Outside of that one year, you're taking it to a PC repair shop. And even trying to get that one-year warranty is a pain. So it's not great. 
honestly, Apple's warranty is miles ahead of every other company I've ever seen that does Windows computers. And then, like I said before, if you want to buy a laptop, congratulations. Not only did you just get a new computer that's portable, you also got a portable space heater. Because trying to do anything on it that is moderately challenging for that computer will turn it into an actual source of heat. It will get up to the components inside of that computer can and will get up to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. The outside of that computer, hot enough to actually burn you. So be careful if you're using your computer for something it's not meant to be used for. Now, desktop PCs. And there is so much to talk about here. So the pros, not now you don't have hundreds of options, you have thousands of options. And most computer companies will let you do what they call a build your own. You can go into their website and you can pick out all the parts you want and they build it for you. And because you're working now with a desktop, a very big piece of hardware, it's incredibly easy to service and repair and add. For example, I record all of these webinars that we do in full HD, 60 frames per second to my hard drive. My hard drive, both of my drives really, are getting very, very full. So personally, I am waiting for Cyber Monday to buy a lot more storage space for these webinars. I can literally go buy something and throw it into the computer I already have. And now I just have double, triple the amount of space. It's really as easy as just building Legos. Just these Legos are a lot more expensive. So that to me is the biggest benefit, is the fact that you can add parts and replace parts when they break, but also when they get old. It's nice to be able to only replace the one part that you need to upgrade and not have to buy a completely new computer. Then another great benefit is that with laptops, you really need to worry about how many ports you have and be ready to start buying a bunch of dongles and attachments and things that hang off of your computer because you don't have enough places to plug in your stuff. Well, on a desktop, you're going to have more ports than you know what to do with. On most desktops, expect to have about six to eight USB ports and one to three ports for monitors, which is the nice part. Now, drawbacks. Because these computers are built by hand, either by yourself or like by someone else, mistakes can happen in, in building it, but also setting it up. It's very common if you build a computer for something not to work straight off the bat and figuring out what that is can be difficult sometimes. So it's a trade-off. And then the other one is that desktops are just the computer. You're still going to need your screens and your keyboards and with most computers that you build yourself they're not going to have Wi-Fi. They're not going to have Bluetooth. My computer doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I have a cable hooked up to my router, and I have a little plug-in Bluetooth device. It works. It's, it's convenient. It was $20. It's not anything bad. Like These aren't big problems, but these are just little things you need to think about. Uh, is it bad to leave a PC on all day long, or is it better to turn it off at the end of the day? I recommend turning it off at the end of the day, or at least restarting it every now and again. It'll let your computer update, and with some types of computers, it will help it to run better. It will clear out the memory, it will give your computer a nice fresh start. Can external storage memories like the one you're talking about uh, be... Fixed. I plug it into the computer, but it does not read it. Um, 
Simple answer, most definitely. What the issue is is a little bit more of a challenging question. Uh, there are companies that do hard drive repair and recovery. Uh, this is literally me Googling. It's, you know, just hard drive repair and recovery. Something along those lines will get you searching for the right things. And those companies, you would ship it off to them. They would repair it and then send it back to you. Uh, processor suffers when memory fills up. Yes. Yes, it does. Because when you can no longer remember anything very quickly and your computer needs you to be remembering things quickly, it's going to start to get things a little bit messed up. Speaking of remembering things very quickly, the last thing I want to talk about before we get into the suggestions is going to be these scary acronyms. SSD versus HDD. You're going to see these a lot when we're talking about how much space a computer has. <sighs> HDD stands for hard drive disk or hard drive. It is the slowest type of drive and it is likely what you think of when you think of a storage device. It looks very much like a needle and a record. Bless you where there's a needle that goes onto a disc and the disc spins around. And that needle is reading the data on that disc. But the needle can only be in one place and it can't jump around very fast. So it can only, it can only write, it can only put things onto the storage or take things off of the storage as fast as that needle can move. So it's really, really slow. A SSD, or solid state drive, is going to be much faster. And we're talking like 10 to 20 times faster. Because it does not have a disk. It's all solid state memory. But it is much more expensive. Like 30 to 50% more expensive for the same amount of space. But... When it comes to having your primary drive, I will never, ever suggest getting a hard drive. Your computer will take two minutes to boot up, and it sucks. Get a computer with a solid-state drive, and if you need more storage space, buy a drive to stick inside your computer, or buy a little... Kira, do you have the little... Uh... Yeah, you can buy a little hard drive that you just plug into your computer. And that's how you can store all of your bulk stuff. Literally this. Buy one of these for like 80 bucks and get a better main drive. Because it's, it's like saying you want to have the nice car to go out on your Sunday drives with. But that doesn't mean that you need to drive some horrible daily driver car. The car you're driving every day, you want it to still be nice. You want it to still be fun to drive. Get the solid state. Get the hard drive for the extra stuff. Trust me on that. I'm looking at buying a basic home computer. What's the most important thing to look at? Is 4G or 8G better? I'm going to talk about that when I go into suggestions. Uh, do you need to buy extra protection or security with the desktop PC versus Apple? Uh, are you talking about software security or hardware warranties and like hardware protection? So for the computer itself or for your safety online and your computer's safety kind of thing? This is going to be something right here. Like this right here is super important. What's best for you depends on you. It's impossible for me to recommend one computer to everybody. For a college student, I'm going to recommend laptops about 99% of the time. For a working adult, if you don't need to be portable, desktops are going to be the best thing for you. These are going to give you a lot better bang for your buck and also will have much longer lifespans. For a person that already has other Apple products, Mac's going to be better for you. It plays really nicely. For gamers, third time, 
don't buy a gaming laptop. Get a PC. Get a desktop PC. Literally, if I, if you said I have $1,400 to spend on a gaming laptop, I'd say, cool. Spend it on an $800 gaming laptop and a $600 lap. Or sorry, spend on an $800 gaming desktop and a $600 laptop. You'll get better performance. Don't get a gaming laptop. Please <laughs> learn from my mistakes. Don't get a gaming laptop. I, I will literally help you find a laptop and a desktop for the same price as the gaming laptop, and it's going to be better. All right. Off. I'm, I'm good. I'm good, I think. You sure? I think I'm good. I don't think I need to say that again. I think everyone gets it. Uh, for software security, um, Malwarebytes, Malwarebytes is all you need plus Windows Defender if you're running PC. Windows Defender is going to be perfect. Uh, Malwarebytes is going to clean up everything else. If Provided you're using your computer responsibly and you're not doing anything horribly illegal, that's going to be enough. I, I, that's all I use, and that's all I've really ever used. Most of the time, common sense is the best computer security you can have. A computer virus is not going to magically appear on your computer. What's going to happen is you put yourself in a situation that you're now at risk. You are the biggest vulnerability in your computer security. Um... Remove the hard drive and keep it or destroy it. Um, for my computer? Uh, for my computer, I'm just going to plug in a new one. I'm going to keep the same 2 terabyte drive I have and probably get a 4 terabyte drive on top of it. I, I never really recommend destroying hard drives. The technology doesn't get old and hard drives last years upon years upon years. Just repurpose it. Sell it to a secondhand shop. They keep their value really, really well. Uh, Kira's plug-in hard drive she has is from 2015. I have hard drives, literally hard drives last for absolute decades. We're talking decades. They'll still work. Do I recommend antivirus for a desktop? Um, I keep getting messages that my desktop is not protected. Um, Windows Defender is the built-in antivirus for Windows, and it's great. Malwarebytes cleans up all of the little odds and ends that aren't going to hurt your computer, but aren't needed for your computer. Uh, is there an email we can reach Jonathan? If more questions come up, support at sectorsmadesimple.com. Um, again, I'm the first week in December, I was going to do it this month, but I have other topics I want to cover. Um, the 3rd of December, I'm going to be doing a webinar on computer safety, uh, tech scams, and keeping yourself safe online. So for all of those antivirus, malware bites, how to stay safe online kinds of questions, December 3rd, mark your calendars, I'm going to be going into all of that as well as tech support scams and how to keep yourself, and most importantly, your parents or grandparents safe. They are the ones that are most at risk. So. Educate the family, keep everyone safe. The human is always the weakest part of the system. Protect the humans and everything else will be good. Good humans. <laughs> Let's get into recommendations, shall we? Again, I need to say this. I'm not sponsored. I wish I was. That would have been an awesome thing to be like, hey, they paid me. No. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just talking about them because they have good reputations, good reviews, and good value for what you get. These are all my own opinions from my own research. Computer parts are updated every single year. NVIDIA, AMD, everyone comes out with a new, line, a new version every single year. So whatever I say today is going to be out of date in six months from now. So because of this, yeah, things might be a little out of date, but you can always buy last year's hardware for a huge discount. It's not going to be much worse. It's going to be pretty, pretty good. Now, it, you can save some money by doing that. 
But to make sure that the information in this presentation is useful, even when these laptops and computers are no longer the best, I want to talk about why I've chosen each pick, as well as what specs in a computer you should be looking for. Let's get into the price points. Martin's saying I had a bad experience with an external hard drive due, uh, that burned out and stopped working. On the repair shop, they couldn't recover the data. It happened to be a higher capacity drive of two terabytes. Yeah. This is a two terabyte. Was that like a lacy drive or something? I had a, I had a two terabyte drive that I had in college fail. The problem with external drives is when they're being transported, they're being knocked around a little bit. A hard drive is like a CD, and it has a little needle. So if that CD gets scratched, data is going to be lost, and the drive might fail. There's a lot of part. A hard drive is a moving thing. There is a disk inside of it that spins, and there's a lot of parts that can break. Solid states are great, mostly because they're solid. They are stationary. They don't move, so there's less parts that can be broken when being transported. They tend to be a little bit more resistant to bumps and bruises and whatnot. All right, let's start at the bottom. I want to spend as little money as I can to get something with a screen that turns on that lets me go to Google or YouTube or Gmail. For budget, there's absolutely nothing better than Chromebooks. Chromebooks are awesome. They're great for little kids. If you want to get a, a kid their first computer, that they might smash it. You want to get a computer for a college student that the computer might get dropped. Th there's literally nothing better because of this feature right here. A Chromebook is going to run very similar to a PC, except that instead of storing information on the computer itself, you store it up on the cloud. And we've talked about that in the past in our subsector spotlight on cloud computing. What this allows you to do is get a much better computer for a lot cheaper, because if you break the computer, you can buy a new one and all of the stuff that's up in the cloud, you just bring it back down and throw it into your computer again and you're good to go. The best laptop that I could, or the best Chromebook I could find was the HP 360 at $340. This will give you 128 gigabytes of storage, which is plenty for programs and keeping any important things on that drive, as well as it works as both a laptop and a touchscreen tablet. How safe are Chromebooks to invest? Um, they're great. They're really good. I mean, you're not going to get a high-performance computer. It's not going to be fast. It's not supposed to be fast. It's just supposed to be lightweight, easy to bring around with you, and if it gets broken, it's not something you cry over. You literally just go out and buy a new one, and that's just the cost of doing business. But the reason I really like this HP one is the fact that it works as a laptop and a tablet. And in the Chromebook line, there are a bunch of different sizes. You can get 10 inch ones, you can get 14 inch ones, and different storage options. 32 gigs, all the way up to 128 gigs. And some of them even have a little slot that you can stick a micro SD, if I have a micro SD with me. It's the little, uh, it's the little storage things that you put into a, a camera. You can stick those into your computer as well for extra space. How about a Julie Staub tablet? I have mine. Those things, they work. They turn on, they let you go to Chrome. It's not going to be the best tablet you'll ever own, but it came with the class and it's really good. I mean, I have mine. So they're good. I wouldn't have let my mom sell them if they weren't. Uh, do I recommend this computer as a college student? Uh, I, I hesitate to use the word recommend, but it's a good option if budget is the concern. There are other options in here, though, that are also really good choices for a college student. 
So Chromebooks, again, they are the cheapest of the cheap, and that's okay, because sometimes that's all you care about. But there are many options, so do some research, find the one that works for you. For Windows laptops, you can also find some entry-level Windows laptops around this price point. The Acer Swift 1 is around $400 and gives up a lot of the performance for, or gives up a lot of kind of display. It, it's not as pretty, but it works. It's a Windows laptop. You get what you pay for, I guess. But if you're just looking for something that is all around good, the Acer Aspire 5 for $500 is a very consistent option. That is what I would say is if you wanted to buy someone a laptop that's going to be useful for today and also for the next couple of years, that Acer Aspire 5 is probably going to be the one to go with. If you're not worried about them breaking it. If you're worried about them breaking it, get the Chromebook. Again, the biggest benefit of the Chromebook is that they're small and cheap. If it breaks, you don't need to worry about it. It's going to cost more to fix it than it would be to buy a new one. The Acer Aspire 5 is going to be your entry-level actual laptop. So, cheapest desktops now. Because you might already own all of the things that you need for a computer besides the computer itself. Or you have an old computer you just want to update. So, for PC desktops, the Acer Aspire TC895UA91, it's horrible names, they all are horrible names, it's good. It's, it's around $550, and it's a great computer. It will get you started, and it will run just about anything, any normal program, to get you going. What about i3, i5, and i7? That is going to be how many lanes your grocery store has. i3 is going to have less lanes than i5, which is going to have less lanes than i7, which is going to have less lanes than i9. Most of the time, I would say only look at i5s or above. If you're spending anything above $1,000, only i7s are above. Or better yet, just go with AMD. AMD is always going to give you better value. What about antivirus? Which one is better? Windows Defender uh, is going to be the best thing you need, but again, I'll cover a lot of that more in detail on December 3rd's webinar. Now, here's where we get into our first Mac. If you want an entry-level desktop, Apple sells something called the Mac Mini. It's $640 for last year's model, $699 for this year's model. They are awesome. They're small, they're literally this big, and they're powerful. It will get everything done. And again, if you already own Mac products, I can't emphasize enough how nice it is to have your text messages appear on your computer and be able to respond on your computer to those. That's the one th that's the only thing I miss about switching over to Samsung. I miss being able to text from my computer. When all of this information is stale, the thing that matters here is that we want to have at least 8 gigs of RAM. Anything below that is not going to be enough for a desktop. And we want at least about 256 gigs of solid state storage. Now, mid-range laptops. These laptops will be, this is, this is if you don't need to worry about budget and you're looking to buy something that's going to last for years, go with these mid-range laptops. As I will say later, you're better off spending a little bit more today to buy a computer that will last for years. And the best part about these computers is you don't need to ask, can my computer run this program? Yes. Yes, it can. Games, maybe not so much, but it'll, it'll run most basic games like League of Legends or anything like that, no problem. Apple's MacBook Air. $1,000, all-around amazing computer, as long as you don't need to plug anything in. I can tell you this with certainty. I have never seen a laptop with as horrible of ports as this MacBook Air. It has four ports, and I hope to God you have the connections for them, because that's all you get.
That's the biggest downside in my eyes. The fact that the ports are terrible. What should someone consider when buying a used MacBook? Um, make sure that they show you what's called the cycle count. The cycle count is how many times the battery has gone from 0 to 100. Or sorry, 100 to 0 to 100. Laptops only last for so long. I've had MacBooks that broke because the battery expanded and broke the computer because it got above a thousand cycle counts. So make sure the cycle count of that computer is either 500, maybe, yeah, about 500 or lower. That's the main thing you're looking for. And then besides that, make sure the outside's in good condition. Now, if you want to get the kind of MacBook Air experience, but you want Windows, you can get the Microsoft Surface 4. Same great, same great product, same horrible ports for the same price. If you don't mind spending a little bit more, my recommendation in this category would be the MacBook Pro M1. It's just under $1,200, but I cannot say how much I'm incredibly impressed with the new line of MacBooks that Apple's come out with. These computers are incredible, and this one is the first of the three that is really, really worth mentioning. At this price point, really what we're looking for is the display and the processor speed. We want the display to look nice because we're spending a thousand dollars. We want the one thing that we get to connect with this computer with to be pretty. Nothing's going to be prettier than Apple. Apple's screens are gorgeous. You don't even need to worry about those. For processor speed, it's always going to be a question of how much do you want versus how much are you willing to spend. Um, um, uh, what would be the best laptop to buy for a small business to run bookkeeping and taxes in terms of storage and speed? Keep all of that stuff on your own computer. Don't go cloud. Back things up in the cloud, but always have a local storage as well. I would say um, if you're looking for a laptop, look in the mid-range area. I would say go for any like bookkeeping and taxes programs, Anything above about $400, $500 will run that stuff pretty fine. So mid-range and even the budget options would work. My recommendation, always if you can, go with the mid-range. So between Chromebook and Microsoft Surface, uh, I couldn't download TOS on Chromebook. Uh, I would always say go with... Chromebook is basically your entry level... As soon as you can, get over to Windows, get over to Mac. It, you're just going to have a better experience, um, much better support for things as well. Chromebooks are budget computers, and they are positioned as such. Windows computers, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars without even exaggerating on a Windows computer. Now, this webinar is going to go over time. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot to cover, and I want to make sure that I'm answering people's questions. Mid-range desktop PCs. If you or a family member are a gamer, this is about where I would say we get into gaming PCs. Right now, with the way that chips are and the way of computer prices, desktop PCs are a little tough because they are expensive and a little bit more expensive than you might want. So to minimize how much these price changes impact us, we need to rely on what are called pre-built PCs. There are companies that will charge you to build the computer for you and ship you a fully built computer. Some great examples of these are the Skytech Archangel 3 or Archangel 3 and the CyberPower Game Master, again horrible names, GMA1410A. <laughs> Basically Skytech and CyberPower both make really good pre-built computers for fairly reasonable prices. And the great thing about buying pre-builts is the fact that you can always add more storage. Just like I can do with my computer, you can open it up, follow a very simple YouTube tutorial, and plug in a new solid state or a new hard drive in minutes. A RAM stick break? Go ahead and plug it back in. Or go ahead and replace it. Super easy to do your own repairs. 
this this is where you can get into gaming computers. Don't buy a laptop, buy a mid-range desktop PC. The things we're looking for here, lots of storage. You have the space, use it. Get some more storage. And then also a dedicated graphics card. If you're spending $1,500 on a computer, which is about where we're at right now, it's not hard to get a graphics card that is eight, even maybe 11 gigabytes. That is gonna get you a really powerful graphics card that can run any game. That is where these computers are at. If you're not looking for gaming and you're just looking for budget, you can cut that down and maybe go to a six gigabyte graphics card and knock off like $400. Why are HDMI cables expensive? It's, it's because the name HDMI has not changed, but the technology has. The HDMI cables, there are many different types. They all look the same, but there are different types. 1.0, 1.1, 2.0, 2.1. So you might end up paying way too much for an HDMI cable when you don't really need it. Um, if you're ever worried, the cheapest cables off of Amazon, like the Amazon Basics HDMI cables, that's what I use. I've never had a problem. I've only ever sp spent anything over Amazon Basics price for a single HDMI cable, and it's to run 4, 4K 120 hertz to my TV. And that cable was $60. So yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Is it okay to buy a refurbished computer, and what type of computer is good for home basic use? Um... For home basic use, I would say anything, spend over $600, do not spend more than $1,500, or maybe over $1,200. If it's secondhand, don't spend over $1,000. Really, um, I, I wouldn't recommend buying a computer at that price point that's refurbished. Unless, like, okay, I wouldn't buy one off of Craigslist, let's say. I would buy it off of... Or I would buy it from a store. Yeah, that's fine. But anytime you're buying something off of Craigslist and it's a desktop, it's so easy for them to put things that would never work and just sell you a computer that would never work and is junk. You can get scammed far too easily buying secondhand if it's not from an actual store. So be very, very, very careful. I would almost say just buy the new thing or buy an older model from a very reputable retailer. You're spending $500,000, $600,000 on something. Really, you need to make sure you're not getting scammed. There are so many people that will try and scam you buying pre-built computers. All right, now we get into the top end stuff. We're talking now about $2,000 plus for a computer. These computers are meant for professionals or for students that are in video editing majors or are engineers that are doing 3D modeling or doing heavy computer programming and multi-threaded applications. I'm gonna leave a lot of this open because at this price point, it's all about taking what you saw in the mid-range and adding on to it, adding new components, upgrading components and making it be what you want it to be. What is the best touchscreen monitor? Most of the time, desktop monitors are not touchscreen. You're mostly gonna be looking at touchscreen laptops. And in those, all you're looking for is two, two in one. So you can look at, up best two in one laptops and you'll get a pretty good list. What's up? That's not mm -hmm. So in this range, my first recommendation and I'll say this in a little bit as well. My, if, sorry, when I buy my next laptop, I'm buying a MacBook Pro 14 inch. They're great, they're beautiful, and they're so stupidly fast. For $2,000, it's the best value laptop you're gonna find. And it's funny seeing it come from Apple, but that's how it is right now. Because of how expensive computer parts are, Apple making their own computer parts has allowed them to get very competitive with the pricing. What is your opinion of the HV and the HP Envy? I've always felt that the build quality it, it's a little plasticky, 
but it's good value. HP makes some really good computers and the battery life on those things is great. It's like 10 hours, 12 hours of battery life. So really, really good. Um, it depends on exactly which model you're talking about because HP Envy is kind of like saying BMW 3 Series. There's going to be many different types within that same group. So if you're not a fan of Macs and you wanted PCs but still have a very high-end thing, this is the only gaming laptop I'm going to have on these lists. The Razer Blade 15 inch is an awesome option. 1700 base model, once you put things into it to make it what you want it to be, it's going to be $2,000. It's the only computer on this list that I would genuinely say could be a viable gaming laptop but you're also spending $2,000. I hope the thing can do a lot more than just survive. Now, at this price point, you're really looking for a laptop that has a high quality display, 1440p or 4K. You're looking for a dedicated Nvidia or Radeon graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM and over a terabyte of storage for PCs that is. For Macs, you're always going to get less storage. It's, it's Mac. That's just how they work. Top-end desktops. Again, unless you're building your own computer, buying pre-belts still going to be the way to go. At this price point, you can look at buying an iMac, like the one I have back here. But if you're spending this much on a computer, get a PC that you can replace the parts in. This computer was amazing and has been amazing, but it's so slow, it overheats, and it's not really usable beyond just being a secondary display. So get a PC, get a PC please. If you're going to spend this much money, buy a PC. Again, for the pre-builds, Skytech makes some awesome options. Shiva and Kronos, you start at this price point, you get to find the one that looks the prettiest for you. And brand is not as important as the hardware that's inside of it. We're looking for, and these are some scary looking things, so I'll just break these down for us. When I say XX70, what I mean is NVIDIA, last year it was the 2070 and 2080. The year before it was the 1080 and 1070. This year it's the 3070 and 3080. You want that, thir you want that 70 or 80. It is their higher end cards. For graph or for the CPU, you want it to be whatever series, but you want it to be the 700 or 800 Ryzen or the 700 or 900 Intel. Over one terabyte of storage and at least 16 gigabytes of 3000 or higher megahertz RAM. If you're not satisfied and want to build your own, there's a website called PCPartPicker.com that makes it all pretty easy to build your own computer. You can see what others have built. You can browse by budget. You can browse by a single part that you want and build the entire computer around that one part. And if you're ever curious, you can always send me your build and we can talk about it. Again, this is stuff that I genuinely just do in my free time because it's fun. I like building computers. I've built almost 10 computers at this point for me and friends and family. So it's a cool thing to talk about. I'm more than happy to help you out. So final thoughts. It's hard buying a computer. It is a huge investment and it's one that FOMO is huge because things go out of date very, very quickly. And not just the technology is, I already did, the technology is going to go out of date, but your needs of what you need that computer for are going to change as well. This is the big thing. If possible, avoid the budget options. They will make more sense short term. But as I learned with my laptop, when you spend a little bit less expecting a little bit more, it's not going to last you as long. That iMac right there was $2,700 in 2013 and it still works today. I could still use a laptop or a computer that I spent $2,700 on eight years later. 
So when you pay a lot more for a computer, the computer is also going to last a lot longer. Now, in college, I always used my gaming laptop because it was portable to take over to friends' houses. But I wouldn't make that mistake again. I would just buy a desktop computer and a laptop. If I had to buy a laptop today, that $2,000 MacBook Pro, easily my choice. That thing is incredible. Price, performance, uh, heat, weight, everything. It even has an HDMI port, which is the first time they've had an HDMI port since 2015. Good on you, Apple. And if I had to buy a desktop, I would probably go pre-built to save a bunch of money. Hi, Jonathan. Last year, I got a Lenovo laptop. I don't know if it's good or what do you know about this laptop. If you send me an email at support at sectorsmadesimple.com, I can take a look. Again, I'm not going to advise you what you should do. I'm not a computer advisor. I'm just going to tell you, yeah, that's a really good laptop. But it, again, it's all about does it work for you? If it's doing what you need it to, then it's good. You don't need the top-of-the-line computer at every day. The important thing is that it works for what you need it to do today. Buying a better computer will help you today, but more importantly will make it easier so that you don't need to buy a computer next year or the year after. It will still be good enough for a longer period of time. MacBook Pro for $2,000, in your opinion, good for video editing? Yes. Yep, that MacBook Pro can literally do just about anything. I have a MacBook Pro 2012, still working perfect. I DJ every weekend. Nice. Serato or Tractor? So, that's it. That's the presentation on computers. It was a lot, and again... I don't expect that every little thing here is going to benefit each and every person, but I hope that by showing different price points, I was able to show something that does interest you, something that does give you room for research and room to explore. Buying a computer is a valuable investment because it is a tool, but the tool needs to fit you and make sure that it does what you need it to. So, thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm always here at supportedsectorsmadesimple.com if you have any questions. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. See you all next week. Bye. <laughs>